Welcome to another lively edition of The Deadly Experiment with your host and producer, Rick Adams, and once again, my co-producer, co-host, and co-pilot in Christ, Scott Smith. Amen, Brother Rick. Amen. Welcome back to the program, Thank Scott. Thank you for having me with you. It's always a pleasure, and it's always nice to bear witness to the truth. Yes. And to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Amen. That's why we do this. Well, you know, we're, we're really rolling along with this uh, series of broadcasts that we've, we've done now in the fourth year and here on uh, the Public Access uh, Network in Rhode Island, uh, certainly reaching the entire state with a message that people need to know because the times that we're living in now are the most trying times that we've ever seen. And yet, as Jesus warned, you ain't seen nothing yet in so many words. The worst is yet to come for America, for Rhode Island, for our world. We are now living in that time of darkness that Jesus Our good about. Lord said that the tribulation would be like none before mm -hmm. and none after. Right. So, and I, it, you know, it's, it's been going on for a while now. Exactly. And uh, we're getting to the point where uh, people need to prepare mm -hmm. and be aware of what's going on. Absolutely. Because we're getting ready to, have all our freedoms taken away. Our uh, economic uh, uh, freedoms are going first and foremost because if you don't have basic economic freedom and private property rights, you don't have any freedom in America. That's right. And we're losing them. Now, let us do this today on this show. We are going to go back in time and next week as well to a time when uh, a program was aired across America during the early, what I call the early real patriot movement in America and we have uh, a rebroadcast today of a program on television that was aired in the early 1960s some time ago when I was a little boy growing up and when you were growing mm -hmm. up and we saw then the changes that were happening to our country at that time and one of the changes Scott that dramatically and inalterably changed the landscape in America was the fact that the United States Supreme Court imposed its will on America and on the people of our nation through the infamous uh, Bible decisions and prayer decisions of the infamous court. I always say, Rick, that they turned the First Amendment's freedom of religion mm -hmm. to freedom from religion and all of that all you have is two different words freedom of religion or freedom from religion and they took our country that had freedom of religion and expression right. to one that people can be free from religion it was and, an exercise and, and, in orwellianism and and what and the reason for it is mm -hmm. so that people understand is that as long as our rights come from god and that's an acknowledgement nobody can take them as the declaration of independence proclaimed. so aptly pr pronounced right and what the government did in the 60s was create all these civil rights mm -hmm. and the laws that go along with mm -hmm. these civil rights mm -hmm. which come from the government. Right. So government right. basically had to get rid of God yes. in order to supplant him mm -hmm. themselves. Right. And that's what's been going on and we're at the point now Precisely. that after 50 years of this nonsense it's coming to a head. And as Ronald Reagan used to say, are you better off now than you were then? And I think the answer from most thinking Americans who still have some brain matter left would be a resounding no we are going down the tube everyone I talk to today whether on the street or in casual conversation says what in the world has happened to America morally economically religiously mm -hmm. governmentally right. every, you know educationally all the pillars of our society have yes. been eaten away right. and undermined by those who control from within and, and from without. Mm -hmm. And one of the keys to destroying our nation and its heritage is by using the legal system to destroy what is left of the organic law. Now we're going to program and play on this broadcast today, so you can tape it if you wish. That Dan Smoot report in the early 1960s dealing with the subject of outlawing God 
going back now to the early 60s, so you know that the language may be a little bit different, you know, ter choice of terms, as we'll show on next week's show, the 14th Amendment, blacks were then referred to as Negroes, but the message is still the same. The meaning is still the same, and unfortunately, the meaning and message have been totally altered so that our Constitution is nothing more than what George Bush called it. A GD piece of paper. Right. So now we're going to broadcast for the sake of our viewers that episode with Professor Dan Smoot, who is exposing the malaise of the war on our Constitution by the forces of evil in our land. Let's play that uh, program right now. The American Civil Liberties Union has brought action against a school district in Pennsylvania because children in school read the Bible. In West Virginia, silent prayer in public schools is illegal, though silent meditation is not. Here is the ultimate in political thought control. Under pretext of protecting freedom of religion, the Supreme Court has destroyed the freedom of millions of school children to recognize or even learn about the source whence the liberties of our people came. Pretending to enforce a separation of church and state, the court has illegally assumed authority to banish from public schools all established faiths and forms of worship and has, in effect, decreed agnosticism, the approved religion of the United States. A small minority of children may show irreverence toward God or even blaspheme his name. But the preponderant majority of children who want spiritual nourishment may not speak a word to God. Nothing could more surely destroy the foundation of our civilization than this drive to outlaw God. The drive has had frightening success primarily because of the widespread ignorance among political and religious leaders about the Constitution. The Constitution created a contractual limited form of government. The Constitution was the contract. The parties to it were the people and their servant, the federal government. The people reserve the power to change the contract. The servant of the people, the federal government, was given no authority to alter the contract, but was strictly bound by all its provisions, whether government officials like the contract or not. The Constitution listed all powers granted to the federal government clearly denying it powers not specifically granted. Since the Constitution did not authorize the federal government to infringe any human freedoms that a Bill of Rights might seek to protect, the Founding Fathers thought a Bill of Rights was not needed, but the people demanded one. So the first Congress in 1789 submitted and the states ratified ten amendments, which came to be known as the American Bill of Rights. They could be called a bill of limitations. They tell the federal government what it cannot do. They list certain God-given rights which the federal government cannot infringe. The limitations did not apply to state governments. The religious freedom provision of the First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. For over a hundred years, the Supreme Court held that this was intended only to restrain the federal government from infringing religious freedom, that it left state governments with unrestricted power to do whatever they pleased or their people permitted with regard to religion. After the 14th Amendment was illegally proclaimed a part of our Constitution in 1868, there was contention that this amendment extended the application of the Bill of Rights, making it a bill of limitations upon state governments. Scores of cases were brought before the Supreme Court by litigants claiming that some state action had violated their constitutional rights. For more than 35 years, the Supreme Court held that the 14th Amendment did not alter the meaning or application of the Bill of Rights. In their formal opinions, Supreme Court justices said that the federal courts had no authority to review or adjudicate actions by state governments. They prophetically warned that even if state governments were abusive, it was contrary to constitutional principles and dangerous for people to seek relief from federal courts. The legitimate relief for the people 
from abuse by state governments is in state courts or at the polls. Letting any branch of the federal government intervene in state matters would build the federal government into a colossus infinitely more destructive of liberty than state governments could ever become. As the worldwide socialist communist movement affected thought in the United States during the early part of the 20th century, the Supreme Court began to weaken its stand on this sound constitutional principle. In 1937, the court began abandoning the ancient doctrine of stare decisis, which means that a court must follow principles laid down in previous decisions. In any free, civilized society, citizens must know with reasonable certainty what the law of the land is, else it is impossible for them to be law-abiding. When the highest court reverses its own decisions, it is saying that what was legal yesterday is illegal today, but may again be legal tomorrow, depending on how the court feels about it. When such a state of affairs prevails for long, even the most civilized nation will become a lawless society, kept orderly only by force of dictatorship. In the Brown versus School Board decision on May 17, 1954, Chief Justice Earl Warren dealt a death blow to the doctrine of stare decisis and to several other basic principles of adjudication. Earl Warren ruled, in effect, that the Supreme Court can change the Constitution at will without regard to law, intrinsic meaning, or precedent until the people of America demand that Congress correct this situation, we have no constitution, we are at the mercy of a judicial oligarchy. On June 25, 1962, that oligarchy, in the New York school prayer case decision, abolished a cherished right of all the people of America, the right to teach a reverence for God to their own children in their own schools. The court outlawed the recitation by school children of a brief non-denominational prayer, not compulsory upon any child or teacher. Justice Stewart dissented, saying, quote, The court says that in permitting school children to say this simple prayer, New York authorities have established an official religion. I cannot see how an official religion is established by letting those who want to say a prayer say it. I think that to deny the wish of these school children to join in reciting this prayer is to deny them the opportunity of sharing in the spiritual heritage of our nation." End quote. Officials of the National Council of Churches and other befuddled churchmen supported the prayer case decision, ignorantly claiming it a legal enunciation of the separation of church and state doctrine, which is not an American constitutional doctrine at all. They said the decision applied only to an official prayer in one New York school district and would have little effect elsewhere. But the American Jewish Congress, the American Civil Liberties Union, and others who fought for the prayer case decision seized upon the decision as a basis for outlawing every vestige of religious ceremony or recognition of God, and even the teaching about religion in public schools. These groups are determined to force upon our nation a perversion of our constitution, abandonment of our spiritual heritage, and an educational blackout about religion, the most important factor in the development of all that is worthwhile in man's culture since the dawn of civilization. Note just a few developments since the prayer case decision of June 1962. New York authorities have forbidden school children to recite stanzas of the Star Spangled Banner and of America, which contain references to God. The American Civil Liberties Union has filed suit in Los Angeles claiming that it is illegal for school children to recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag because the pledge contains the phrase, under God. Throughout the nation, school officials have ruled, or court action has been taken to make them rule, that any kind of religious act in a public school, voluntary grace before meals by kindergarten children, Bible reading, Anything is illegal because of the Supreme Court's prayer case decision of 1962. There have been proposals for a constitutional amendment to permit prayer in public schools. That is dangerous and unnecessary. A constitutional amendment authorizing prayer in schools implies that the present Constitution outlaws prayer. That is not so. 
The Constitution provides, and the Supreme Court itself for more than 100 years ruled, that Congress can control or abolish the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. That there is no right to appeal any case to the Supreme Court unless Congress, by law, specifically grants that right. Congress has never granted the Supreme Court appellate jurisdiction in educational and religious matters. So Congress should simply pass a law saying that the court never did have, does not have, and shall not have appellate jurisdiction in any case affecting education or religion. To eliminate damage already done by federal court action in this field, the law should declare all previous court decisions affecting religious and educational matters null and void. That is the remedy. Congress can do it. Unless the people elect a Congress, which will do it, the foundations of our civilization will continue to sink into the mire of ignorance and gross materialism until our nation becomes another godless dictatorship. The remedy is for the people to elect a Congress of Constitutionalists. Goodbye. Bless you. Back, no? About six years ago or so, six, six years, I think, and uh, at 89 years young. And, uh, but as you can see, uh, a scholar, mm -hmm. a man who truly understands impeccably the law of the land, the Constitution. You knew of the at the United time States. it was happening right away. Oh, absolutely. Served in the Federal Bureau of Investigation and left there after about 10 years, realizing that the battleground was in trying to inform the American people as to who the enemy was and what they were doing to our Constitution. And now, this same enemy today. This legal bulwark of communism in America today, whether it be the, the Lawyers Guild or the ACLU or, or the, the Jewish American Congress or the Zionist Organization of America or the ADL, they're all working for the same goal, to eradicate the very foundation of our freedoms. You know, they call it the ADL, Anti-Defamation League. I call it the American Defecation League <laughs> because all they're doing is pooping all over all of us, Rick. Well, I don't and know, Scott. I think they need to defecate because they're cerebrally impacted. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm sorry. The, the, the bottom line is, is that these people are taking away our spiritual heritage That's exactly in right. any way that they can. And they're supplanting it with their evil satanic mm -hmm. pornography, mm -hmm. their godless music. Right. I mean, it, and it just, that, those are just two, the, the, the movies that they show, the, the Talmud vision that we watch, mm -hmm. the, the magazines that are read. Uh, there was just a recent thing um, uh, on CNBC, the, the uh, pornography, uh, porn, um, the American pleasure or something. It's a $14 billion industry. I mean, nothing could be more mm -hmm. demoralizing to human beings than this type of what they call entertainment, this lust, this, this, you know. You and, see, and that could never have been accepted into the mainstream of America as it has now, like pornography, abortion on demand. Mm -hmm. All of these evils are now what's taking America down the river of no return. Right. But first... First and foremost had to come the removal of the authority of God in our form of government. All of these things could not have happened unless the enemy within, the legal bulwark of communism and Judeo-Bolshevism, mm -hmm. could succeed in turning our very system of law on its head. And, and, not, <laughs> and not only that, Rick, these evil synagogue of Satan people, mm -hmm. okay, they're at the point now where they're getting ready to ban anybody who happens to disagree wow. with the evil machinations that they come up with. If, if you happen to t be a truth teller and tell the truth about what's going on, you're going to be a hater. Oh, is that? So and, and, you're, and, then, and then you're going to be a terrorist, supremacist, and you're going to have to be put in jail and you're going to have to be tortured, Wait, and you're not going to have any in of... In America? Right, right here. This and, land? And, and it's happening now, and I dare say that the hate crimes legislation that is currently before the U.S. Senate, if it passes, will cause you and I and Dan Smoot 
<laughs> to be S909 is the Senate bill, yep. the hate crime, hate speech bill in Congress that was inspired originally from the murder of Matthew Shepard, although his homosexuality had nothing to do with his murder. And his, and his media. massive amount of methamphetamine right, drug abuse, right, exactly. and, and the guy who they mm -hmm. say killed him because he was a homosexual was mm -hmm. the guy that did one of the guys who did it was a bisexual himself. Right, right. I mean, it goes, the, the lies, and, and you're not going to get any of this from the Jewish-controlled media. No. They're not going to give, they're only going to give you. Unfortunately. Right. They're only going to give you what happens to be good for their ends well, of you're, godlessness you're and right. control. You're absolutely right. I've often thought about that and said this bill in Congress now has is, is been pushed through. Every single session, every time since the last what eight or ten years, it's been about a decade. And by the hand of God Himself, it was defeated at the last minute. Amen. George Amen. Bush wouldn't take a stand on it until finally he said, "We didn't need the bill." This is Baby Bush in the in the 2000 era. Said we didn't need the bill, and he sort of promised he would veto it, but it never got to his desk. This year, as we speak now, this bill could very well have already passed and Obama has said he will sign this legislation into law and who is the organization that's promoting this bill which as Professor Smoot said comes down to what mind control and political thought control anti-defamation league mm -hmm. of Bernie Britt and the Southern Poverty Law Center Morris Dees Morris Dees gave a one-hour speech before the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., and it was put on C-SPAN, and it was on July 10th. Mm -hmm. And uh, what he did was, he doesn't get on very often because he's such a creepy Jew himself. <laughs> I mean, he, he went through a divorce, and his wife exposed him Child for... Child molestation for, for, charges. For not only that, but, but for mm. being a homosexual and wanting mm. to have her watch. And this is all documented stuff that, that you know, if people want to do the research... Straight out of the Talmud. But Morris Dees was up there on July 10th, mm -hmm. um, really hammering on the hate speech of truth tellers and scaring everybody that we are terrorists that are out to destroy this country. Now, now who are these so-called terrorists, Scott, for the sake of the viewers? Because I know there's in people In my opinion out, or, or no, in no, their no, opinion? No, because I know there's people out there now, you know, the love us, the hate us type. Mm -hmm. They're saying, yeah, you guys are terrorists. Mm -hmm. Remember, we got a lot of a feedback. A lot of it, yeah. People said, you should be in jail, and you should be tortured, and you should be killed. Right, Why? Right. Because this is America. You're free until you disagree with us. Right. Then you're no longer free. Now, why or how can these people, and who are these people, that are classified as terrorists? Me and you, but who else besides us? Anybody who happens to disagree with them. Period. Oh. End of the discussion. Give me an example. Give me an example. Well, all you have to do is disagree with their federal control and say that you are a state's rights constitutionalist. Mm -hmm. And once you indicate that you don't recognize the illegal um, usurpation of our rights that come from God by the federal government into the states. Yeah, yeah. Once you once you disagree oh, with that with, with that federalis, that's mm -hmm. right. You become a terrorist to that federal organization. Oh, isn't this what and, Janet Napolitano's memo and her study has said? Janet Napolitano. Only security. That's right. And and wow. the the organization I used to be in, the United States Coast Guard, has become the enforcement arm the jackbooted yes. thugs of homeland the Homeland Security. Security. Mm -hmm. And I spent four years active duty in that organization. Wow. And, you know, it's a military organization. Just because it didn't come under the Department of Defense, it came under the Department of the Treasury, mm -hmm. it made it easy for the federal government mm -hmm. to bypass the posse comitatus of not allowing uh, operations on the mainland mm -hmm. by our de Department of Defense forces. Yes. They get around that. So, but this Napolitano woman, who is uh, right out of the, the sewer of Satan, she is making 
veterans who come back after serving their country as potential terrorists. And that's why I brought up Morris Dees. Morris Dees, and anybody can go on C-SPAN mm -hmm. up until, I, I think they make it. Check um, it out. What yeah, I think said. they do it for two weeks. So up till uh, uh, July 24th, oh, they'll be okay. able to go on to C-SPAN. Well, this program's being aired just about then and even after then. Right, so but up till July 24th, right. they'll be able to go on C-SPAN themselves in the video library, mm -hmm. see Morris Dees. What he said was, if not five times, not once, he said that our veterans coming back should be oh. considered terrorists potential terrorists potential five times terrorists. and and then and then he equated the uh, people who ha because they've been militarily trained and they pose a risk because of their training and God knows why else he wanted to but what he also did and and he said this at least four or five times about mm -hmm. our military veterans mm -hmm. and any veteran organization in the country ought to be looking at this, the Marines, that, that this is what's happening to our veterans mm -hmm. because it's, it's an abomination what Morris Dees had to say that pervert. And not only that, he equated the veterans twice and, and the potential to Timothy McVeigh, who's nothing more than a stooge for the Zionist Jews mm -hmm. who blew up the Morrow building in, in uh, Oklahoma City. And, and he brought up twice that um, Timothy McVeigh I, it was uh, a military veteran that came back from Gulf War I, I guess, mm -hmm. and that every single veteran that comes back from these wars, these illegal mm -hmm. wars mm -hmm. to search for weapons of mass mm -hmm. destruction uh, in, in Iraq and Afghanistan they should be considered terrorists. potential Timothy wow. McVeigh. So some, Each and every some young one of them. man that comes back, or young woman, from these wars, these illegal wars that we've seen all the way, really, when you come right down to it, these ungodly, unconscionable wars like mm -hmm. World War I and World War II, making the world safe for communism and Bolshevism. Exactly. And this war here, the Iraqi War, the Afghani War, now the Pakistan War, they come back and say, I got some questions about these wars, and I don't believe we were told the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm getting sick. My children now are getting suicidal because of what I've been through in this war, and we're being denied health care. We're being denied adequate medical treatment. And now we are terrorists? Yeah, now we're being wow. thrown into the terrorists. And I, I urge all the veterans organizations and all the military organizations to look up and see what Morris Dees had to say and what this hate crime legislation that Langevin, I'm sure, supports, all of that them Kennedy, I'm Island. sure, supports, Jack that we I'm White sure House. supports. Four losers. It's, yes. it's unbelievable. I see by the clock that we're going to have to continue this next week. We're going to continue also with another episode from early television with Dan Smoot on the 14th Amendment. That's the amendment that was never legally ratified, and you'll understand why when we show you and how it has become the basis for much of this destruction today the in our legal system. The 14th Amendment, the Civil War, was so we could put the 14th Amendment in effect. Unbelievable but true. We'll be back next week, same time, same channel. Tell all of your friends and enemies as well. This is Rick Adams for Scott Smith. Goodbye and Yahweh bless his elect. Amen.